Hey everybody, it's James Ferrer from AppMaker University, and today we're going to learn about how to set up a second generation Cloud SQL database. It's really important that you know how to connect these to AppMaker, especially when you go to roll out your production applications. So we'll learn how to set it up, and then in some follow-up videos I'll show you a little bit more about how admins can go in and set this as the default so that everybody can be using Cloud SQL right from the start and we can just get rid of the old drive tables way of doing things. I think it's about time that we just kind of get rid of them. And you're going to see so many more benefits from using uh, Cloud SQL. Uh, another thing, though, I was thinking about while I was pronouncing it, some people say SQL and some people say SQL. So if you don't like how I say it or if you think that it should be pronounced a different way, you know, go ahead and in the comments below, tell me your opinion. Let me know what you think. Always remember to subscribe to us. And let's head on over and get to the work. All right, so let's dive into it. First, I want to show you a little bit about the format I have for today's a tutorial. So we've got uh, over here on the left hand side I've got the instructions and I'll put a link to this document down below in the comments so that you can you can go there directly. I guess you can go there now and, and just follow the steps there but you might miss out on a few key things that, that kind of happen as we go through. So the first thing we want to do is go to console.cloud.google.com and it should bring us to the home page. If we created other projects we'll see something there. We may not. Um, we, we want to click up here on this drop down and we're going to click this plus. First we want to select the organization. Make sure you're in your, your company's organization. And then click the plus key and that'll allow us to create a new project. And we'll call this one uh, Gen 2 Example. Okay. And then we just click create. And so that spins it up. And you know, this is one of those little kind of buggy, quirky things that you have with with this. Uh, notice the little spinning indicator over here. It's, it's still creating our project and so if we wait we should see that show up. Okay and now we've got this little one right here that we click on and we can actually click right there to uh, see that it's, it's created our project. And if we click on it then it's going to jump to it. Um, otherwise it, it, it doesn't immediately jump there so if you think you're in there you might actually be creating it in the wrong project but just make sure up here it says the name of your project uh, right up here at the top so that you know you're in the right project for that and the reason why we do want to create a project for each of our production databases is that that allows us to control the users uh, we control them through the IM and admin so uh, you can you, you have access directly to the database and then you have AppMaker where you as a developer allow the users and you control those permissions in AppMaker but to access the database directly this is where we control those permissions so we want to make sure that we're setting it up in its own project so that each database can be managed separately. It also allows you to manage billing and those kinds of things uh, through, uh, through the project itself as opposed to having everything in one project where you know you might have different databases that you want to provision for different cost allocations and things like that. So good idea to set them up in several projects. We're going to scroll down here to storage and find SQL here. And we'll click on the button there. And it asks us if we want to create an instance. And we say yes. Now, if you haven't set up billing before, um, it might also ask you to set up billing. Or it might ask you to go ahead and do your free trial, uh, those kinds of things. It is going to ask our credit card. So you have to go through those steps. Um, and you know, put in a credit card. It's, it doesn't immediately bill you. It doesn't start billing you until you actually have a month worth of. Uh, if you have the free service, then it'll give you like two hundred or three hundred dollars worth of credits that you can use up. But uh, otherwise, it doesn't start billing, and it, the cost is typically very small, so it's not much to worry about. Uh, we are going to do the MySQL type, and we do want to choose this second generation. Okay. And so we have to give it an ID, so we'll also call this one Gen2, just to have something there. And we do need to set a root password, so, um, so we'll just set up a, a simple little password here. And then we want to leave this region. This is, this is kind of an important thing, uh, especially if you're foreign. Uh, what I understand from some of the issues that we've been seeing is because uh, AppMaker is stateside and it makes its calls from uh, stateside. We've, we've found that the best success is using this US central region uh, and not choosing, uh, even if you're in Europe or Asia or Australia, any of those other places, um, leave it at the default for US central and it's going to work a lot better for you. Uh, it's just because the connection is a lot shorter for Google there on that. So we can just leave these and the zone can stay the same. 
simply click the Create button, and it'll go ahead and create a database. Okay, it can take several minutes for this to actually get generated, so be patient. Uh, when it is done, you'll see that it's got a little green check, and it will be a link here to your instance. So we just click on that. And now we're going to have to set up a few things. So the first place we'll go is we'll go to this Users tab here, and we're going to create a user account. So we'll create a username and a password. Okay, and we want to make sure that we have this Allow Any Host checked. Okay, don't restrict it because then the is not going to be able to create, click to it. So we click Create, and it's going to create a user for us. Again, this takes a few seconds to get going. All right, the next step here is we're going to want to create a new database. So we click over here to Databases and this Create Database tab, and you just have to give it a name. You're going to need to remember what this is later. Uh, I can show you where to get that information. Then we just click Create. You can name it anything you want. I just I tend to like to name my name for some reason. Um, now the next part we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a service account to access the project. And so we're going to go back up here to the little hamburger up here, and we're going to click in this I am um, services here. And then we can click the add button up here at the top. And we're going to have to put in uh, the app maker Maestro name. And it's this part right over here. Okay, so just copy that from the document, paste it on in here. Uh, we do have to select a role, so we can do project and then just editor. All right. And we click add. And that's going to give app maker permission to be able to actually access the database. So we're, we're actually all done here. In the setup, we can now skip over to AppMaker, and here I've got the create new application setup. So we'll go ahead and just create a brand new application. Okay, so we're going to want to go ahead and, and click on the database. Now, if your domain admin has already set up your domain to use Cloud SQL by default, then you're going to see a screen that looks like mine. If you don't, you're going to see a screen that looks like the one over here on the left, which is the create model screen. Um, that traditionally used drive tables. In the in the newer setup, when you when you've used uh, when the admin sets up your domain, then all of your databases will start off as Cloud SQL. It's definitely a lot better way to do that. Uh, they are in a shared SQL instance. Uh, we'll have a video coming up that shows you how to do that, so that you can you can just have that by default, which is a much better situation going forward. Uh, but in this case, we want to connect to a database that's. Uh, that we've already created. So we're going to actually click Cancel on this screen. And we're going to go up here to the gear, and we're going to click on Database. And you can see it's telling us, do we want to switch to a custom Cloud SQL database? Um, and that is indeed exactly what we want to do. So we go in here, and the first thing we're going to need is the project name. So we go up back over to the console.cloud.google.com here, and we click on our little hamper. And we open up SQL again. And right down here, we find our instance connection name. So we can just click the Copy button here. And we can paste that right in here. And notice it says Schema right here at the end. That's the name of your of what you called the database. So we do a forward slash. And remember, I called this one main. So we want to type that in. And then we just click on this Update here. And now it's set up. So all we have to do now is go ahead and start uh, making new models. We can click on the Next button. So we'll add a name for our model, and we'll type in the credentials for the user we created earlier. And that's it. Our setup is complete. We're now able to create new models in our Cloud SQL database. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and so you can get all the updates on our latest videos. And if you're wanting a program that leads you step by step from beginner to expert in AppMaker, then go to AppMaker University and check out our boot camps. Thanks, and have a great day.